they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear them. Hi everyone, my name is Enrique, and you're tuning in for another episode of Talk of the Town. Uh, today, we're here with a very special guest. Ooh, it's the kid Biz. Busy Blaze, man, we big outside. Brooklyn, I'm back, talk to me. Yes, sir, we got Busy Blaze in the building. Thank you so much for stopping by, man, it means a lot. Uh, so we just want to start off with rapid fire questions. Nice little icebreaker game, get us flowing a little bit, okay? Copy. All right, cool. So the first one is, what is your favorite food? My favorite food is probably like, Italian food, so mm. like I would say, uh, like a vodka pasta. Ooh, nice. That's, that's a good one. It's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> what is uh? What's your favorite song right now, at least? My favorite song right now. Mhm. Mm John, no, it's probably like "Vent" by Byron Messia. Okay. Or like, yeah, that, that one's a good one. Yeah. Facts. All right. What is the last movie you saw? I don't really watch movies. No. Nah, okay. I watch First Forty Eight. Oh, word? Yeah, nigga. Okay. Yeah. Learn right. something from that. Yeah, definitely learn something. Fact, yeah. <laughs> learn who not to trust. <laughs> so, okay. What is a one artist you want to work with that you haven't yet? One artist I want to work with? Mm -hmm. hmm. Be it managing, featuring. I want to write for Lola. Ooh, okay. Let her tap in, you know what I'm saying? I want to uh, cook up some shit for her. Oh, uh, shit. And uh, Roddy Rich, that's my guy. I fuck with Roddy Rich. Even yeah. though he's not a New York nigga, you know what I'm saying? I fuck with him. All right, but. Like, he, he do his shit. Okay. So what is, uh, what is one song of yours you wish got more love? One song of mine I wish got more love? Mm hmm Sheesh. Um, Going 10. Yeah? Going 10 was a fire one. I shot that on my birthday. We went all out. You know what I'm saying? I had my boy Raz pop out, go crazy. Uh... That could always get some more love. Everything could always get some more love. Tap in. Yeah. Stream Busy Blaze. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> okay. And last one. What is your favorite thing to do in New York City? The favorite thing to do in New York City, I'm not going to lie, it's a whole new New York. I've been OT for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And every time I come back, it's new shit, new shit. There's, there's, there's bars up the block from the crib. There's all types of shit. I was just chilling in Williamsburg and a whole fucking, uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, <coughs> um, at a hotel okay. or the pool. Like, vibing out with mad white people, like, that shit was never done before, you know what I'm saying? Before the <laughs> fuck I got here, so. Shouts to New York. I like to hang out by pools with white people. Mm. Yeah. Where else but New York can you go hang out with pools with white people and then go home, go to the bodega? An area that was just, like, not allowed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, bro. Uh, yeah. What, shit, when I was growing up, like, 10, 15 years ago, I couldn't even go to Williamsburg by myself. Right. Now everyone wants to go to Williamsburg Bush by themselves. Williamsburg is definitely lit now. Yeah, I for real. I might get a crib out there, man. Shout out gentrification. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get into it. So, Blaze, or, what do you prefer, Busy Blaze? You can call me Busy. Busy? Okay, yeah. Busy. So you've been a uh, you've been making music for a long time. How about we take it back to the beginning? What uh, what are what are the beginnings of Busy Blaze looking like growing up in Flatbush? Okay, so the roots of Busy Blaze growing up in Flatbush. You know what I'm saying? We always had teams. We always had a a, a, a crew growing up, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. one of the first crews I was part of was Scum Gang, one of the first crews we kind of helped found it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Me and my man Just So Brooklyn, uh, Asiatic, like we really helped founded that uh that that Scum Gang, the original core we had, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The hood, the hood lit. So that's kind of what it was like. I kind of, it kind of was always like a, a, a good time growing the fuck up, even though, you know, niggas had beef and shit with certain people mm -hmm. and um other shit like that and never like stopped us from running every party, party promoting, hitting, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, like, yeah, fucking bitches, you get it. So, uh, nah, it was a good time growing up in Flatbush, man. And no, nobody had it, but everybody moved like it was lit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say that. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. Yeah, so Scum Gang, this is like, I mean, uh, we spoke about it off mic, but just for like the viewers at home, this is like the same Scum Gang that 6 9 was over here shouting like out in his first tracks, right? Okay. Yeah, so, so, so basically, <clears throat> that whole situation happened because in like 20, I want to say like 18, nah, before that, it was, it was a while before that, yeah. um, 6 9 reached out because they was trying to, you know, get down with like a, a, a team that they thought they started, but then they looked up, you know, the niggas had the information locked down, we had our shit locked down, we had our shit LLC'd from Jump, so when Smart. you look up that uh, online, it was us. So he reached out, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? He reached out to us, and, uh, and I tapped in with him. I sat down, I had a, a conversation with him. He played me some music. This shit 
wasn't like hitting, you know what I'm saying? Like as far as like like sonically, music wise, but the nigga had like mad shit in there that was like, you know, like different from from what everybody was doing. What do you call yeah. it? Um, what do you call it? Not like clout shit. It's called um, fuck, I can't remember the name right now. But basically, shock value. That's the name. Uh, of okay. He had a lot of things that included yeah. shock value. Boy was cutting up. Fake coke with the EBT, getting fake head on the couch. You understand? Yeah. By a girl. It didn't matter what he was saying in the song after that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I peeped that from the beginning, brought him on board. And at this time, I'm a full-on artist. You know what I'm saying? Full-on Busy Blaze, B-I-Z-Z-E, Get Busy, all that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Scum gang. But I can still see when a younger artist kind of has potential to just do their thing. So I brought him on board. We locked him in and brought him to the studio with us, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So... That's how that started. Yeah. All right. If you really want to get into how it ended, it's just like, you know? Yeah. yeah. No. Nah, it's, uh, you, you know. Yeah. yeah. R- r- the rest is history. We, uh, mm-hmm. we're aware of what happened. <laughs> Big fact. I did something for Complex too recently. They, like, probably like a year ago, they wanted me to tap in and tell that story too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I could imagine, like, especially considering the press that he was getting, he had this, like, rapid ascent and rapid descent, you know, for all intents and purposes. Happens, man. If you're not locked in with the right team, it'll happen. Get with the right team. Get with the gang, get with Ghost the Label, get with Get Busy, we lit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a nugget right there. Yeah, that's a <laughs> Absolutely need the right team, and yo, look out for Busy. <laughs> nah, big facts. Yeah. So, okay, so after the whole 6 9 debacle, after that happens, what is, uh, what's the next step for you? Do you? So for me as an artist, I've always been pushing as an artist, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, I told you earlier off camera, I felt like we always did everything perfectly, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, shout out to Sprat Fool. Sprat was my manager for a long time, you know what I'm saying? And at them times, we was knocking shit out the park. Every time we did something, it's perfect, you know what I'm saying? We mm-hmm. blowing up on SoundCloud. We doing uh, shit at uh, D, not DD172, but that was way before that. But we was doing shit at like, uh, uh, what the fuck is that called? Uh, Dash Radio. I did some shit at Dash Radio when I touched down in LA. There was all types of websites I used to post us. So that's where I got a lot of blog shit from, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So things was blowing up. Things was doing great on an artist sense. Mm-hmm. But what happened uh, with it is along the way, no matter what, like I said, if I see an artist that it makes sense to be on board, it makes sense to help them in a the situation. I've always been a helpful person. Yeah. So I've done that along the way, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So this time around, I'm just here to do more, get a nigga out there, say more, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rather than just do it perfectly and just do the perfect videos. And that's, that's heads up for artists, you know what I'm saying? Coming in this shit too. Yeah. Nowadays, it's a different ball game. Get your personality out there. Niggas is getting signed off of their personality. Niggas is getting attention off of their personality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like that part matters compared to back in the day where you just had to do it perfectly. You know what I mean? Or, sound, yeah. or, or make good music. What, uh, what made you want to go into management? You know, like helping people get their stories out, helping them get right, make sure they're doing the things that maybe like weren't too keen to you when you were coming up as an artist? Like what was the thought process behind that? Okay, so... As far as me creating Ghost the Label, mm-hmm. which stands for Go Hard or Stop Trying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I always wanted the best team. I grew up with a lot of homies. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we were deep in the streets. We was doing a lot in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like, Scum Gang, even at the time, had four or five artists. You know what I mean? So, there's a lot of us, but I, I kind of, like, I wanted... Like, basically, I have my phone. I'm high. Run the question back? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> nah, you're good. So I was asking, um, you partially answered, like, the first part I know of where it. I'm going to pick up from. I just need you to re- remind me back one more time. So, like, what was the process or transition behind you going from artist to management to and management. wanting okay, to put people on? So, yeah. So that's the reason we created, like, you know what I'm saying? Ghost to label and shit like that. It's basically because of, of I always wanted a team. Yeah. And I know that damn well I could be a team for somebody if necessary. You understand? Mm-hmm. So the shit that I didn't get, yeah. I'm willing to give to other people. You know what I'm saying? And I did that with, like, Suave Porter, and I did that with Smook. Smook was my first experience, really, at it. 6 9 we brought, I brought on board. I, I'm the one that vouched for him, told the whole team, we need to sign this kid. You know what I'm saying? We need to lock in with him. But I didn't, like, help walk him through. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We had another uh, nigga that was part of the team. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. he, he tried to, like, put his hands on 6 9 and, like, walk him through. But gotcha. he had his own intentions with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that kind of is what fucked up the relationship, too. So I don't call his as my, like, first, like, management experience. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I feel I you. would say Smokey was my first one. You know what I'm saying? Where Smokey mm-hmm. was living with us. Like, if it wasn't, like, for him, for, for us making sure he survived, he mm-hmm. couldn't go out and do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he's coming home from the studio and, and, and making fucking records with platinum producers. You understand? Like, yeah. Like, like, that record he did not nice. 
drop, coming home and like, yo, Blaze, let me use your laptop. Jumping on the you know what I'm saying? And yeah. dropping the fucking record and we watching it do fucking 500K the same day. You're like, what Sheesh. the fuck? On SoundCloud, you understand? Yeah. And this is like this kid that don't got nothing right now, but he had relationships. Mm. But that's the difference. At that time, he hit right in between where he didn't have to be too much out there on social media. Yeah. He was barely on social media blowing up. But Smokey would get caught in like a, in like a, I understood that about, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. thing in the art, I think like other moments matter more than just sitting there to, on social media or sitting there um, trying to put out music. Mm -hmm. He would link up with certain people. The kid ended up in fucking picture with Kim Kardashian and, and Kanye West at Jamie Foxx crib. You understand? Yeah. Random shit that we picking him up from these places. You understand? <laughs> and dropping him off to these places, not even knowing what he's about to get into for the night. Mm -hmm. Type shit. You know what I mean? We drop, leaving him with Rocky and, and it's just a hoopla by the morning. He's on fucking TMZ. You Sheesh. understand? Yeah. So it's just like, Organic shit, you know what I'm saying? I learned that, and that's what got me into that. That's what made me want to get into that. Once again, when I was with Smokey, I was a full-on artist still. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But helping him out with the management situation. Went on tour with him. We did an overseas tour. Fire, you understand? Yeah. I had a relationship with ASAP Rocky from long before, so that also helped his situation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, because uh, before that, show I even forgot to mention. Go ahead. We can ask the next question. I'll mention it after. Oh, no, that's cool. We could keep on okay. talking about it. Yeah. Because before that, I, I, I don't know how I forget to mention this, this part of my history. Um, I started off working at Bait. Oh, wow. I worked at Bait the Nate for five years. Oh, wow. You understand? Okay. I got hired there when I was a kid, like literally like 17. Sheesh. You know what I'm saying? So I worked right there in Bait, New York, five years. That's where everybody knew me from. That's where um, Cuddy was still working at the time. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of shit that inspired me to music. You know what I mean? I don't want to skip out on it. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's a lot of shit that inspired me to music. I was working with Cuddy. Cuddy invited me to Red Bull Space and different places like that. And a nigga too young to even get in. Yeah, you understand? They dropping. They, they, I'm at the fucking door and I gotta act the main fucking act to come down and get me. <laughs> you understand? Because at this time it's like this nigga's new to New York. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's just a nigga from Ohio. He just got pat with him. He don't got nobody else with him. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I un also understood the duo of like, damn, one person could really get it done for you. Pat took Cuddy under his wing. Who? <laughs> And now Cuddy's huge. You yeah. understand? So I'm like, shit, nigga. I'm busy, but I'm from the hood. Like, but everybody know me in my hood. I'm a success story in my hood. You understand? Whether it's not like a, a all over the place and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. worldwide yet, they know me in the hood. A lot of people was inspired by, 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 by my grind and what I was doing at the time when nobody was doing shit. Yeah. You understand? So I could take somebody, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I chose the money over the fame so I can invest in somebody, you understand? And take them to something big. Yeah. So why the fuck wouldn't I do that? You know what I'm saying? And no, at the same absolutely. time, I get to sit back and be a, uh, who, who does it? Yo Gotti. <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying? Or, or yeah. one of them niggas that got a money back, yo, making him money consistently. So when he drop, it don't matter where he go platinum. Exactly. Money back, yo, gonna go platinum. You get it? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's like, that's a really smart move, too. And honestly, that's like a great takeaway at such a young age. You know, being that young, working at the Bape store. And even then, just like, while well, Kid Cudi's working there, I could imagine all the other high-profile artists that probably came into the store. Five years, bro. That shit is a part of my life. I grew up in the Bape store. Like, niggas know me from Bape. You understand? Yeah. Everybody know Busy Blaze from Bape. They don't know me, they, they lying. You understand? Like, mm -hmm. literally, like, Fur calling me, yo, bro, yo, you got them kicks, da 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 You tell me that's my guy. I got you, bro. I'm going to put him on the side. Chris Brown coming to buy shit firsthand. You understand? Call him my phone first just because I show love. Mm -hmm. You understand? And, and whether, you know, fuck how. I showed love because you know that don't matter now. I'm far going <laughs> past that place, but you know what I'm saying? I did my thing and I showed love to the streets and set it for myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I could have been baked out every day, had every fucking drip and gear, but instead I made little connections and friends where, where if I'm gonna give you a discount, you gonna get it off the arm. I could just take it for myself, mm. keeping it a buck. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But that's not what I do. I go and I show love to other people. So, so yeah. that's how I've been. That's admirable too because I feel like a lot of the times in this in the industry, like a lot of people. It's just like, what can you do for me? Not necessarily, what can I also do for you? You know, like it's very, uh, it's like super transactional and not really genuine. But in being genuine, you build those like the the foundation of those connections that prove to be like really meaningful. Big so. fact. And I said it brought a lot of relationships from that store. Like I said, I had a, a, a um, crazy relationship with ASAP Yams. That was my dogs. You know, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Steve, like that's my that's my people. You understand? Like I had a good relationship with him coming in. Just just all of these people who wanted in at the time, you understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why, with my eyes, I pay attention to people who want in. I seen y'all when y'all first started doing Talk of the Town and things like that. Y'all want in, y'all want parts of, you know what I'm saying? The mm -hmm. industry, I see that. So the consistency and the uh, uh, is why y'all deserve, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, what, thank what, you. What, whatever it is y'all getting as, as, as y'all get it along the way. Mm -hmm. So it's the same shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 I always pay attention to people who want in, people who want it for themselves. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Thank you, man. Well, I appreciate that. Everybody here at Talk of the Town, oh, thanks definitely. you. Yeah. Um, but what's it called? So, you start off in Bape Store. You got a lot of connections there that you eventually use to help, like, carry you through the music industry, helping the artists you work with. You When you, when you guys had Smokey, he was already with Aug? No. Okay. So, how, how did that happen? He was on board with Aug. Oh, really? So he got brought on board with Aug because <clears throat> he did a remix to a record. So, Smokey's really young at the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe, like... This is 13, 14, this kid is buzzing up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 2017, like he's a kid. Yeah. So, so as a kid, it's very easy to, uh, to sway your crowd. You know what I'm saying? Or, or get somebody like, to get your, your fan base to be gullible in a sense. They're all kids. Yeah. So he dropped a record where he remixed one of um, Rocky's records. And you know how sometimes people will drop something on YouTube like uh, featuring this person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can, then you can get away with it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he do that featuring ASAP Rocky and all the, all the kids in his school, all the kids in his neighborhood like, yo, what the fuck? And you got a record with ASAP Rocky, you know? And it just buzzed for him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And when it buzzed for him, Rocky's like, oh, you know, I can come out and meet the kid. What the hell? Rocky always showed up to the streets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rocky's like, yeah, I'll come out and meet the kid. Just took a picture with him. Wow. At an, at an event or some shit. And Smokey threw that shit as the artwork of the video. And oh, it's just like, dude, 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 he's just buzzing up, buzzing up, buzzing. People are calling, asking about him. Smart. Asking about him, asking about him. So it spun back to where they thought he was already fucking with ASAP, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. Chase and all that, you know, my man Ish, who was running the situation at the time, um, locked in, sat down with Chase and all that, sat down with Rocky himself and actually, you know, yeah. like, um, like solidified it there. A lot of people don't know, Rocky was 50-50% management with Smokey. So Rocky was his manager also on, wow. on top of being an org. Obviously, he's not day-to-day like us, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like me and my boy Ish. You know what I mean? But, um, and Grape and Jelly and them was there, part of that situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's not day-to-day like us. We dealing with the kid day-to-day. Mm-hmm. But when, when we drop him off, he ends up at a Jamie Foxx, you know what I'm saying, party. Yeah. At, a, at a Kanye party, things happen. So that's why we did that. You know what I'm saying? Or else niggas wouldn't have did 50-50 because niggas didn't raise him. You know, yeah. we had to deal with him, like, really and truly. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. as soon as we're not, shit happens. Mm-hmm. So free my boy Smokey. Absolutely, bro. Free Smokey. Like, I remember being in high school, and, like, that's when I really started to note, like, the young kids, like, being out here making moves, like, being able to utilize the platform and the internet to really help them get their stuff out there, you right. know? And I remember noting, like, yo, this kid's, like, barely older than my brother. Right. So to see the evolution is, like, absolutely nuts. But I didn't even, I didn't realize that, that Rocky was, like, going 50-50. But I mean, I, that was, that's not something that was like, you know, put mm-hmm. out there for everybody to know. But just to show, like, like sometimes I said that really, mm-hmm. I said that really to say that sometimes, like, actually taking care of the person matters. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't do that if, if he didn't take responsibility for taking care of the human being. Yeah. That management shit. It's not a game, bro. Mm-hmm. These niggas be having different personalities. These niggas be, be you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 e- emo, like, all types of issues, drug issues. These kids have anger problems. Like, it's not a game when it comes to management, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so it's just like understanding that part. Like, that's why we did that. You know what I'm saying? And we tell them, like, yo, bro, we're taking on a big, you know, shit. Like, we got to make sure the kid makes it alive the next day to get back to y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we did that. I just say that to say, like, you know what I'm saying? It's a big responsibility. Mm-hmm. So that's why we showed, like, if you're willing to take on that responsibility, then go 50-50 management. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To mm-hmm. show, like, we ain't just going to be giving you, you know what I'm saying, no 80-20, 20, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, 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 we dealing with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Especially, like, essentially helping raise him to a degree. Right. Yeah, so that kind of stuff is super important. So really admirable and noble on your part. So thank you for making us all aware of what you guys have contributed to, to Smokey's career. I know most stuff, man. They know, they, they know me in these streets. That <laughs> this is why I'm doing this little run. You understand? It's because yeah. I, I, I haven't took the time out to tell my story. You know what I'm saying? That kind of just go by. They know me. They know me. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But nah, like, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody deserves their flowers. So I should go over you know, and yeah, run, run down for mine, too. This is just a stop, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a good stop, but y'all see. Yeah, let's see. So, okay, let's go from Smokey being your first real management project. Who who comes after that? Who is it like after the second? Smokey, uh, I went full on back to, 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 to knocking out this music. I went on tour with Smokey at the end of his, his show. We went on an overseas tour right before he signed the Interscope. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. My boy um, Nick put that together. Um, oh, fuck. Nick worked with... Uh, with Bryson Tiller and them and, um, and TJ right now, little TJ. Oh, sure. Yeah, Nick Barr. Nick Barr helped put together that tour. You know what I'm saying? It's just a fire tour. So we'll keep, you're surprised. I say this to kids, and if y'all got a little bit of fan base here, 
get somebody to take y'all over season, y'all see what type of fan base I really got. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the kid was lit, so I did that with him as an artist. You know what I'm saying? I performed on the tour. I had that whole run. I did that. Went back out, like I said, to knocking out my shit. I dropped a, a few projects in between. I dropped Too Busy, uh, Way Too Busy. I had a lot of love. I, um, I, I had my boy JL shot that, come in and, um, and shoot that video for me today. Mm-hmm. And I had Fabio and them, T-Dot, rest in peace, T-Dot in the video. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and this is just off of, you know what I'm saying? We fuck with each other type shit. Like family, like hood shit, you know what I'm saying? Gang shit. So it's just like, uh, yeah, full on into the, into the, into the music shit. Um, I had a, a writing stint with uh, Def Jam, my boy Rico Beats. You know what I'm saying? That's my yeah. guy. Oh, shit. Shout out yeah. Rico Beats. Rico Beats. Yeah, we had him on not too long ago. Oh, where? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's family, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've known Rico since, since, like I said, the very beginning of my artist days. You know oh, what I'm well. saying? Because uh, um, one of my boys from the hood, AI, that's his actual blood cousin. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Well. So, yeah, so he's a fire artist, too. But, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, so my boy Rico Beats... Uh, Asked me to come in on Def Jam when he was working um, over there at Def Jam, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um and I and I did some uh some writing for them over there, killed over there. I ran into some people that I knew already. It's almost everywhere I go, I run into people I know. You know what I'm saying? I ran yeah. into like Dom, um, Dominic Lord. He showed a lot of love. Uh, Stephen Victor was running the show over there oh, at sure. the time. I actually knew Stephen Victor from way back when when I was working at Vape. Oh and wow. He was, he was Pusha T's manager. Yeah. You understand? And like literally, it's just you gotta if you really watch from the uh, industry perspective of it, mm-hmm. and you see these people's come up, you understand? Yeah. In between watching the artist shit, you might not even care about the artist stories the same. You understand? Interviewing people behind the scenes matters OD. Because I, I tell you, Stephen Vick was coming in, grabbing clothes for Pusher, or making pulls, doing you know, damn near like his manager slash assistant because he wants to see him win. You understand? Yeah, and that's no. his boy locked in. And Pusher winning means that he won. Mm-hmm. And from there, even when you stop hearing about Pusha, who you hear about? Stephen Victor. Yeah. On top of his shit, running this label, president here, this, that here. You understand? Mm-hmm. So th- these are inspiring stories that I've seen along the way that people don't even pay attention to. You understand? Know yeah. Like, 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 because they just focused on the artists. And that's cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I'm a behind the scenes nigga right now. So, you know? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I show mean, love to that. I feel you because, like, artists are so important in the sense that, like, they're these essentially these giant personalities, these big images that people invest a lot of money into and ultimately profitable, but it's not like that just happens overnight, you know? Right. Like, it, it's almost like raising a kid. Like, it takes a village to make these things happen. So I think that, like, spotlighting the people behind the scenes are really important because, I mean, like I said, it doesn't really happen overnight. Like, you need exactly. people to make things happen, make the connections, and, and so on and so forth. That's a fact. Yeah, so that situation happened. Um, I got brought in with the Def Jam shit. I wrote for... Um, Bunch of kids over there. YK was over there at the time. Um, YK is in YK, YK Osiris. Osiris yeah. Oh, okay. He was over there at the time. He just got signed by AE. Oh, wow. At the time, yeah. So this is when a lot of people was new over there. TJ Porter was new over there. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they had a whole little. Uh, you probably know the, the Def Jam camps they did. Like yeah. Disputed Def Jam camps. Yeah. So um, they did that album. I don't think that went anywhere. You know what I'm saying? But I know reasons why. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's around the time Pop Smoke shit came alive. So oh, you know, shit. Pop Smoke shit shut down everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, you know, I was right there in the midst of all that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like I said, um, I always took the humble route when it comes to, to my artistry, and I always look for the team to really, you know, push you and build you and, and go crazy. So that's why I said, without a team, you can't really do this shit. You can yell from the fucking top of the hills, yo, I'm, I'm the best artist in the world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if ain't nobody else yelling that with you or can't enough people hear you, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, like, it ain't going nowhere, you know what I'm saying? Like, straight up. So, so yeah, so that happened in between. What else happened? Uh, music, 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 Def Jam shit, uh, Stephen Vick. Pop Smoke shit was a crazy run. My boy Legend, you know what I'm saying? That's one of my, 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 my main producers growing up. He did uh, this record, Big Brother, for me. Mm. Tap in with that. He did a bunch of records for me, my boy Legend. My boy Dunk Rock is lit right now, who's been doing beats for me for years. My boy Shiv is lit right now. Shiv, um, Loud Pack, they, Loud Pack, uh, I think it's Loud Pack. They doing um they've been doing beats for years. Shiv and them got something on Drake album. Um, Dunk Rock uh just produced "Fuck You Mean" by Gunna. 
Oh shit. Yeah, facts. Oh, yeah. okay. And that's my that's boy right. for, yeah, That's why been... that sounded so familiar. I remember seeing that video yeah. of him pulling up on Gunna in the car. Yeah, that's okay. Punk Rock. So he's been um he's he's been at it for years. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all the people behind the scenes is really coming to light. So I'm like, I might as well jump in the light, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With it type shit. But nah, Dunk Rock is my guy. Dunk Rock's been producing beats for me for years. He did today the mm -hmm. record um that JL shot the video to and I got Dunk Rock and them um say that. Yeah, I got Dunk Rock and them um they did that 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 video and I got uh Fabi and them, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Pulling up to the shit and um everybody else in there. So um yeah. Loud Pack, like I said, Loud Pack, they did um Drake album. Who else did I mention? Big Bro Legend, got two, three records with Pop Smoke. Mm -hmm. You understand? He did yeah. the shit with Pop Smoke and P and B. Rest in peace to both of them. Fact. You understand? The, um, like that record. That's Big Bro Legend. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just a lot of like Love. I've been really locked in with the same producers that everybody else is fucking with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As an artist, but once again, without a team fully behind you, it's not gonna go as crazy as you want it to go unless you got the budget. Yeah. And also the right people to put that money on. Absolutely. That budget will go to waste. Mm -hmm. A lot of niggas out here wasting time. Let's not get into that conversation. You understand? <laughs> yeah. A lot of we'll people be here out here minute. taking kids' money. You know what I'm saying? Selling dreams. Oh yeah, we'll do a YouTube campaign for you. Ah 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 ah. You got ten thousand views, not a single fucking comment. You understand? Like, it's, it's, it's really people out here doing that. I don't feel like getting into what it is on later interviews or maybe some other platforms. Yeah. I'll start to call <laughs> names. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But so, right you've been, like, behind the scenes for a while watching a lot of stuff play out. While Brooklyn Drill and Bronx Drill were picking up, like, over the past few years, were you here in New York or were you over in L.A. watching it? So, I've been in L.A. Okay. I've been in L.A. back and forth. Okay. Because I work with a, a bunch of New York artists. Right now, I'm helping um, manage Curly Sav's situation. Oh, that's Anderson. crazy. Yeah, so yeah we just had him on not too long ago, too. Okay, for sure. So Curly, yeah, Curly did a run in New York. We, I added a couple things to his run, too, like press stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Curly, Curly is my guy. I was cur Curly from the very beginning of his solo career. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, like uh, he had situation with the other artists before, mm -hmm. and then from there, he's on a solo career. Yeah. I, um, but the main reason why I've been back and forth for the last couple of years, other than my own, you know what I'm saying, shit has been um, Suave Porter. Mm. Suave Porter is this artist, very special artist, whom I was managing for, um, for two years. You know what I'm saying? Um, the last two years. And um, he's locked up right now. You know what I'm saying? Free Suave, like free SP. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this kid is special. This kid was probably and still could be the biggest thing, you know what I'm saying, in yeah. New York. You know what I mean? Like, something different, like, when it comes to, to, to the music, to the point where, for the first time ever in my career, I felt I didn't feel the need to be a full-on artist, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. At the same time, while helping manage a kid. Yeah. I tell you, while dealing with 6 9 I was a full-on artist. While dealing with, I'm doing shows, I'm doing interviews, I'm, do, I'm not interviews, but I'm doing shows, I'm doing, releasing records, we, you know, campaigns, all that shit. Yeah. For myself at the time. With Smokey, same thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm focused on being an artist. Uh, even when I first started helping with Curly situation, I'm in Def Jam, I'm fully being an artist, you understand? Still mm -hmm. in between, doing all these other things. But when I met Suave, <clears throat> Sorry. No, you're good. The first time I met somebody, type shit, or artist that nigga the sound, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, said everything I needed to say. Mm -hmm. I didn't even feel the need to talk like that no more. Okay. Like, you understand? Yeah, that's great. Like, the kid really said everything necessary to say. You understand? So, with that being said, like, yeah. You know okay. what I mean? Like, with that being said, like, like free SP. You know what I mean? I've even uh, shared his stuff with y'all yeah. a couple times. They've posted him on Talk of the Town. You know what I'm saying? I did a record with him and Curly. I went crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so yeah, he's out there. He, so he, he's here he from here in New York, right? He's from Brooklyn. Yeah, he's, oh, from, he's from Brooklyn. He's from um, Flatbush Sides. Okay, but. You know what I'm saying? So the kid is um, out there. Yeah, okay, yeah. You know Definitely going to tap in more to Suave Porter. Thank you for putting me on. I appreciate that. Yeah, I am. Uh... A documentary coming out too. Oh, word? Yeah. Okay. For his story, because. He's 19, he just turned 20 in jail, you know what I'm saying? Wow. It's a big situation, you're not locked up for nothing light. So, you know what I'm saying, free suave. Damn. We're going to expose the story, expose his whole, uh, his whole upbringing and, uh, and what he really got to offer as an artist for New York, you know what I'm saying? A different sound. Wow. Yeah. That's, no, that's amazing. Yeah. What, um, uh, when do you think we'll see that? Shit, hopefully sometime soon. Hopefully, I want to say sometime um, the beginning of the next year. Okay. Because right now, his, his trial hasn't even started. Ah, okay. So, yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. he locked in with Just Augusto. Just Augusto was K-Flock and them camp. This is all current stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is not, like, I don't do, like, woodwork stuff, saying stuff you never heard of, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, everything I do is current. I just don't talk about it on my social media, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, okay, talking about 
the, the, current, the current state of drill, as is with all these unfortunate incidents of these artists getting locked up after having popped off. What do you, um, uh, what's your opinion on all of that, on the state of, of hip hop in New York right now in general? So I watched something on your platform the other day with a Wayno. Mm-hmm. And he mentioned, um, I mean, he asked him something about drill. Yeah. And he mentioned um, a couple of things that I thought were facts, you know what I'm saying, about it. Not, not all of them were, but the drill artists nowadays, it's like, it started with uh, the, the, the pop smoke in them era, you know what I'm saying? Like a little bit before that, what with Chef G and them, I would say, yeah. where a lot of controversy came with beef. You understand? Yeah. Once, once the fans found out about it, a lot of talking about it, a lot of clicking about it, a lot of fans. When you sit back and read the comments, it's almost sick. The fans are sitting here like, like it's a TV show. You understand? Like, yeah, bro. It's like they antagonizing these people at, at, at the end of the day. Because I couldn't t- see myself like having an issue with somebody and then reading these comments, you know what I'm saying? And not wanting to just like, like, like not feeling like, you know, like, 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 let on or antagonized to go outside and violate. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So the controversy raised the drill shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And from there, kids peeped that. And instead of just anything natural, they just focused on building controversy, building drama, building issues. So now at the end of the day, you got to prove yourself at some point, right? Yeah. So now that's what happens. You know what I'm saying? You put yourself out there, prove building drama, building controversy, building all that stuff, and now you got to prove yourself, and you crash out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you've seen it happen with the best of them. So it's like some of them, I'm not going to say all of them, some of them was way deep, too deep in the streets anyway. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like to even for the music to even matter to them. They just got lit because they had natural controversy, which doesn't make it any better. No. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, there's so many kids jumping in this shit just because it's starting beef with niggas they don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They know that. You jump online, tell a couple, sh- throw a couple francs. You know what I'm saying? A couple SMDs, harass a couple people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They say something back. Now the comment, the, the, the kid, the commenters want to know who you are exactly. and what you got to give. So talk about them. Talk about them. Talk about them. That shit is weak, bro. I talk about the dead shit is weak. Mm-hmm. Like, all that shit is corny. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care for the death, so I'll never talk to them. I don't care for, for anybody else dead, you know what I'm saying? If I got beef with them, so I'll never talk about them ever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, I P them, you don't know what happened in the afterlife, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, literally, y'all niggas talking about niggas, y'all might see you again. Fucking for real. Man. It's, um, uh, I feel like it's become such, like, a super, it's synonymous with the current state of drill in New York, like, talking about smoking on deads and, like, name-dropping all of these, like, people who've passed away in, like, really fucked up ways. And it's unfortunate because so many kids, like you're saying, like who aren't a part of this lifestyle at right. all, don't even really care about the music, just are looking for some quick way to get lit and then like make this shit pay off a different way, right. are doing it as if it's almost like a, like a proven formula that works, you know? Because like so many labels have incentivized those kids who uh, say the crazy shit because they're blowing up and then no, they'll, have, they'll have one pop and song yeah. and they go and perform and then there's like zero artist development whatsoever on that side. Exactly. It's, it doesn't even matter anymore. You understand? They tell them get in the studio, spit some shit. Then they tell them trying to make a, a record about some hoes. Fuck kids about a 15 year old doing a record about hoes, bro. Like, I, you. for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it doesn't bro. even look real. Like, it doesn't even look, 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 look. Like, it's possible. You know what I'm saying? No. Like, it's like, you're going to have big booty video bitches with like BBLs and shit, and this kid is like fucking 11. Like, it's not, it doesn't make any sense, bro. It's just like shit that they roll it out. You know what's coming next? Cause that's when I get called in. Mm-hmm. It's when they need to make them, make them to make a real record. Yeah. You understand? Like, like make something with substance, make something not substance, but something with a hook yeah. and a bass to it. And a, this, now yeah, you can't talk about the dead. You can't talk about uh, this op again. You're spinning the block again. You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. need something with a little more oomph to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's when I get called in, and they come in and we make a record for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. So. While we're still on the topic of drill, like, do you see it thriving as a genre like it has the past few years, like continuing to? If it picks back up to what it was before, like street shit exists. Street shit is every day. I come from street shit every fucking day. I just don't care to talk about it 24-7 online. You're never going to see me talking about tapping into this street shit, tapping into that street shit. I leave it for what it's for. Mm-hmm. So that exists. You understand? You can't yeah. stop that. People talking about their story is going to happen. But... Like, like I said, these kids realize that they're winning off of the controversy. It's not the story. They don't have a story to tell right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the controversy. So therefore, 
let's just do it back and forth. If we argue right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And everybody going to click in about what we had to argue about. Yeah. Then why the hell wouldn't we just come on here and argue? You know what I'm saying? Why would we waste time trying to, get to kick some game or, or say something that, 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 that's a gem? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, all that shit is like, yeah, I, it, it could switch back to that because it come from UK drill. You know what I'm saying? And UK drill, they did mention their ops. Mm-hmm. And everything, we, in every gangster rap, they mention their ops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they got cool ways of saying it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, literally, like, like 50 and them would say so much shit sure. about what's it called. Sometimes they would come out blatant. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But this whole record would never be about one person. Exactly. It'd be about so many different things. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There'd be creativity in it. There'd be other things in it. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, look, let them get their shine. If people gonna keep getting signed, people gonna keep winning, keep keep, keep doing certain things. Mm-hmm. I I I'd, I'd let them get their shine. Some of them hopefully can make it out the mud. Yeah. You know what I'm saying not ha- not end up like a K flock or something like that. They make it out the mud, and then they'll get to sit around people like myself and people who actually know the game and learn something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And 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 switch what they're doing and learn because you can't learn along the way. It's just whack that they sign these kids before they fucking learn how to actually make music. Yeah. No, that's definitely an unfortunate trend. Like signing kids almost too quickly. I think that somebody who's like a really good example of how to start the drill scene and then branch out, honestly, is Kenzo B. She's been doing a really great job of that. Kenzo B. Shouts to Kenzo B. I'm not going to care. I've been been seeing her shit pop up, and she did a freestyle joint, and she decided to change up the vibe, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and and, and kick something different. And she's really showing her versatility overall, and then sticking to her bridges, because that's what matters more, too. You know what I'm saying? Because it's mm-hmm. easy to fold when you don't get the views back on something you thought, you know, was kicking some new style was going to give. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So she didn't fold, sticking to her bridges, working with different artists. That's what matters. You know what I'm saying? That's what I got, like, like the artists that I'm working with doing now. You know what I'm saying? We kicking mm-hmm. shit with different artists. We're linking up. She's doing that, not just in the city, not just everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Showing she got a story to tell, and, and she going to kick it how she kick it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So shouts to Kenzo B. Now, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, for real. Shout out to Kenzo B. Like, I think that she is honestly, she and Ice Spice, I feel like are both really good examples of how to like start off in the drill shit and then spin it once you like have the following. Not necessarily like, Ice Spice, it's not like she was out here dissing anyone. Mm-hmm. And Kenzo, like she had the little beefs here and there, but it's not like it really like damaged her career in any yeah. way whatsoever. Like she's able to spin away from that stuff and like really right. transition towards the more marketable stuff. That. I think that like they're really both good examples of how you can turn this into something yeah. that will get you out of the hood in a really good and positive way, too. I think some of my people's work with Ice Spice situation. Her situation is a little too perfect. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it ain't saying, like, nothing's wrong with what she's doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She writing on her records, shouts to her. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, like, like if not, if, if the producer, she, she went writing on her records, shouts to him, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, she's like, meteoric. Well, her shit is clean. Like, I can't complain. I have really nothing to say about it. You know what I'm saying? At the mm-hmm. time... I'm not gonna lie. I had talk shit on this platform. I talk shit on like like on any our comments. You feel me? What NYC sounds like? I'm heavy in their comments. They know me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had talk a little shit like, damn, like like we pushing Ice Spice, we not pushing Lola, or we pushing this and we not pushing that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Got a bunch of people that came from thing with Billy. I know Billy like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like, like this like OG Marilyn Monroe roll up. You understand? Like like I know them like this like so I want to see them shine too. You know what I'm saying? But at the time it was Lola that had the record. Yeah. But they was blatantly ignoring the record. You understand? Yeah. And and now, like, Lola got hers, I can't complain. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. for nobody type shit. But just saying, like, we knew, you know, Ice Spice shit was hitting in a certain way. Yeah. But people were attaching to it because of it blowing up quicker than I feel like they were attaching to it because it was actually good. Yeah. We learned later on, like, oh, you know, sonically, no, this shit is hitting. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. no hate to it. You know what I'm saying? She comes correct every time. She's consistent. Sonically, it's good. Yeah. You understand? But at first, it was just like, oh, shit, this is blown up. Let me throw this on my shit, too. You know what I'm saying? And that's fine. We all trying to get something. You know what I'm saying? We all trying to get to a goal. But, you know, you got to talk shit in the comments still. <laughs> yeah, that's how you stay yeah. lit. Yeah. I, am, uh, I think that, what's it called? I feel like social media definitely played a huge part in helping propel Munch to, like, this huge spotlight that allowed her to really just, like, take off even more. Yeah, and I'm okay with that. Yo, you don't understand, like, it could be a million different ways these kids get on, and I may come on a platform and be like, nah, that was crazy, that was this, that, but just believe and understand, I'm talking about the actual situation of how, you understand, Mm -hmm. you got put on. You and your success, I want it all for you. You understand, for anybody who gets it out the mud. Yeah. I swear to. You understand, op, this, that, anybody who gets it out the mud, I've done this shit. I've done this shit. You understand? Mm-hmm. I had to make the advance money that everybody got myself. 
in these streets. You understand? So yeah. I've done this shit. So I understand getting it out the mud is difficult. You understand? Even if it's like getting signed, then it's a whole nother part, part to it. <laughs> yeah, half of you think it's not going to make it out through. You yeah. understand? It's a whole nother part to it. This shit is difficult. If you really ain't got it, you're going to have to learn it. If you really don't want to learn it, you ain't going to be able to hold on to this shit for too long. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's simple like that. That's why I only work with people who show that they want it for themselves. Suave didn't have no Spotify or nothing like that. But the kid had 15 million hits on, on SoundCloud. That's a lot. He was the biggest fucking thing in his high school. Kids from his high school is sending me. I mean, my little brother sent me his shit. You understand? Wow. So it's just like he wants it for himself. When I tapped in on it a year later, mm -hmm. I look up his shit. Kid just dropped a little EP. You understand? He just yeah. dropped another little single. You want it for yourself. This shit only got 300 views, but you want it so bad you're going to do it again. So I got you. Let me see what I can do for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And from there, we shook shit up. Nice. Yeah. yeah, that kind of consistency is really important. Like, even when, like, I, as a writer, because I write for the blog, too, so mm -hmm. whenever I go to, like, events, I'm always having people, like, try to pitch me their music and stuff like that, tell me that they're an artist, try to get put onto the website. Right. Like, I always ask them if, one, they have a YouTube where I can find their music, and two, if they have a streaming service where I can find their music, mm -hmm. just to see, like, if it's accessible. And if, like, one or both, like, they don't have, then there's not, like, not really much that I can do for them. Right. It's like not, it's not worth my time or theirs right. because they're not even investing that much time into right. it to have it accessible so people can find it. Exactly. They, like, even, rush, they even rush the, the talk of the town and they rush to what NYC sounds like posting. They rush to this without even having a fucking link to click on. Exactly. Yo, like, bro, like, it'd be crazy, you know what I'm saying? So you know how this should go. Like, like, like I said, I, I'm, I'm tapping in more on the business side of things. I'm mm -hmm. still busy, Blaze, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day... Uh, I'm not fighting the artist fight. Mm. Straight up. Yeah. You understand? Know like yeah. I'm not I'm not the starving artist. Like like how 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 it was. Don't get it twisted. I'm starving to be bigger in business than ever. Mm -hmm. You understand? In everything that I do than ever. Yeah. But I'm not the I'm not playing the starving artist role. I don't need to, to to have controversy with somebody to get on. You understand? Know yeah. If we have controversy, we talk back, we talk shit back and forth. You got some shit to talk. I'm gonna talk that shit. You understand? Mm -hmm. Everybody know what time it is when they hit me in person. You understand? Know yeah. Not saying I'm on no biggest baddest bully, but they know. You understand? Blaze is gonna approach you in person. Yeah. And, and have something to say to you. And also, you know, I get in a lot of different rooms. So you know what I mean? There's no level to the shit where you know you're completely avoiding mm -hmm. me if you really got shit to talk about me or something to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. At the end of the day, yeah, that's all it is. You know what I'm saying? A nigga's still an artist at the end of the day. Niggas still drop artist shit. Mm -hmm. A lot of fans that fuck with my music still. You know what I'm saying? It may not be the whole world. Like I said, I'm still a hood inspiration. But at the end of the day, I'm not a starving artist fighting no artist fight. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to beef with you. I don't need to dance around on TikTok. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, like, especially, like, when you're at that point, like, it's not like, even then, like, you don't really got to work too much like for these artists in a sense, like you can't do too much because you also have all these other, your hands in so many different pots that you're working towards, you know? So like you can only do but so much for these artists that they also gotta, they gotta want it themselves. You understand? Like it, that, that's what matters. That's for anybody. Yeah. Anybody that wanna be a part of this shit, the more you want it yourself, the more you'll be able to do for yourself. And when things fall out, your team fall out, other stuff fall out, you bounce right back and you stay focused on the prize because you want it for yourself more than everybody else. And you'll start to see people want it with you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, on the topic of, like, hip-hop as a whole now, uh, it's been a pretty recent thing that I've seen in a lot of the blogs, so I just want to, like, ask your opinion since you're behind the scenes as well, so you have, like, insight to that. Um, hip-hop been, like, the number one genre for a minute, but it only just recently finally got a number one album this year on the billboards, which is, I think is, like, the longest drought ever without there right. being, like, a, a number one hip-hop album up there. So, what, do you think, like, there's a rhyme or reason for that? Who was the number one album? Number one album was Uzi. With uh, Pink Tape. Was he? Yeah. The first number one. Everyone thought it was going to be Gunna. I think I he, thought it was gonna be gonna too. he debuted, I think, at number two. Same thing with Thug. He was okay. projected to do like almost 100K, but I think it dropped down to like 70 something, 80 something. So he's also number two. Mm -hmm. But then Uzi came out. Mm -hmm. He was also over here, like, he said, he's got, he's got stands. You know, right. he's got like a big fan base. Right. And he said some shit talking about, if you guys get this to number one, then I'll drop Love is Rage 3. So there's definitely that. Yeah. You know, like, the, he, the stands will do their thing. Button, push a couple buttons. Yeah. Okay, so honestly speaking, I feel like it's because there's a lot of running and gunning going on mm -hmm. in the last year. You know what I mean? Like, like, ain't too focused on getting something to number one. We're just focused on we know back end streaming. You know what I'm saying? Making yeah. that bread. We know certain things. Like as as industry people, they know certain things make a lot of money. 
you know what I'm saying? And, that, and, and they also know things they could probably apply to it mm -hmm. for, for, for less money and less, you know, investment to get it to, those, to, to making that good back-end bread yeah. rather than, like, focused on that initial burst. You know what I'm saying? That initial, like, drop. Mm -hmm. Like, back in there, I feel like the whole build-up used to be, like, focused on. Like, let's build up, build up, build up, build up, drop the shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And make sure it get a big boom. We're telling people for, for, for a month that this project about to drop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't do that shit like that no more. Yeah. So it's like the hype on it, it's like I didn't even know Uzi dropped. If Uzi didn't have controversy with JT at the fucking BT Awards, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know he was dropping some shit. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, Damn, really? Like, I don't feel like the promo was out there crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was mad promo? I don't know. Uh, like, I, I see what you, I like, I see what you mean. Guess. Like, yeah. do, do you listen? Like, honestly, do you no, listen to I don't Uzi's music? Yeah. So I can't, I'm not going to give an opinion on his actual project. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I haven't listened to it yet. No, I'll definitely give it a listen. But maybe on the ride. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Out of here type shit. Like, but, um, yeah, no, I just. Yeah, Uzi is definitely. Yeah. Like, it was coming through, like, uh, what, like, ads and shit? No, Switch. Take five, Switch. Take yeah. Yeah. He, he like, because he, like, that whole 2016 class, like, the double XL freshman list yeah. that he comes from, like, they, I feel like, capitalized, except for a few people, uh, capitalized on social media, like, really, really well, because a lot of them have, like, those cult core fan bases yeah, fact, that are growing up with them. Uh -huh. like, they did. Play with Cardi. Mm -hmm. They picked up a lot of cult, cult cult fan bases around then. Yeah. They got it from like zombies in them and like fucking Joey Badass in them and they yeah. stopped rocking them. They, they really had cult fans. You understand? Yeah. That's what really carried the core of they fucking they, they shit. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. people always ask them, oh what, what's the last thing Rocky did or what's the last <laughs> thing this person did? You understand? Know it's just like yeah. bro they core. They got loyal <laughs> fans. <laughs> fucking fan base. That should take you really you far. Everything. Yeah. So um, oh yeah I you know you know what I'm saying? And then I'm not heavy on TikTok and all that stuff. This part of this run is getting me to fuck back outside and jumping on all that other <laughs> yeah. shit, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know. I'm not even quite sure what Twitch is right now, but I'm going to tap in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, like I'm a, you know. it's kind of like, uh, it's just like a live streaming center. Like, you can have all these different, like, genres. Like, some people just sit and chat with people. Like, they'll read the chat online. Do you know who Kai Sinat is? Yeah, I know Kai Sinat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, like, he, he's a really big Twitch streamer, too. Like, he'll just go on, he'll so bring people on. on Twitch, not YouTube. No, nah, he streams on Twitch. Does he stream on Twitch or Kick now? He's still on Twitch. Because YouTube is where I see this stuff. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Copy. So, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's yeah. not good to me. That right there. On Twitch, talking shit. So, um, basically, is it like a video game thing or is it like a... Uh, you, you can. can. Sign in online. You, like, you, you can put, like, you can play a video game. Like, let's say I'm playing Call of Duty. Yeah. Like, I can stream my gameplay over there, talk to people at the same time as I'm live streaming. Like, that, that's the whole thing. Like, streaming, and you can stream... More or less anything, like there's some restrictions, some like stuff you can't do, like you can't gamble on Twitch, for example, but others, like Kick or Rumble, you can, okay. and stuff like that. So that's what academics be on and shit. Yeah. Like he, um, doing that little shit, like he's in the corner, his mm -hmm. um, thing talking shit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like Twitch. I, I fuck with Twitch. Yeah, I'll yeah. Like Twitch is definitely popping yeah. off. Like they have their own little things, like when it comes to like the money and artists and, or like just streamers in general and how they make it, but yeah, that's like a whole different topic, but yeah, yeah like that really definitely helped propel Uzi, I think, to number one, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think it's a, a crazy contrast because you have Uzi over here making number one, but then you got Coyle Ray, who's got like some definitely label push behind her, mm -hmm. being out here having these crazy mixes on TikTok that are blowing up, mm -hmm. but then her second album comes out, and she makes what, I think 10K, like the first week? Man, as long as, don't let that stuff bring you up or down, bro. Because I actually like Koi stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, actually, I do too. That's a thing. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people do. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like people not hearing it initially. Like I said, they work this stuff over and over. You know what I'm saying? Behind, yeah. Like on on the back end, and people eventually run into her records. You know what I'm saying? Whether they slowly expose on TikTok and stuff like that. Uh, certain things you just don't put yourself in the same like 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 races to 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 you know like yeah have those same upsets. You know what I mean? Coilery has a situation. She has uh, creativity. She has, you know what I mean, like, um, like, like a true like push behind her. Yeah. And and a team that 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 supports her and fucks with her. And she just keep being consistent. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. all that matter. Like, don't let that 10k shit. You know what I'm saying? Thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I should have uh, uh, come back in the end. And she'll have a single that does way more than that. You know yeah, what I mean? so, most yeah. definitely. I could definitely see the uh, the third album bounce back from that. Yeah, and definitely. that's for everybody to take that into a court too. All these girls mm -hmm. coming up, I know y'all. Some, some of y'all sign shitty situations. Some of y'all sign thing. Consistency and all that shit is what matters most. Yeah. 
All right. So we're going to get into the last game. Let's do it. And then we'll wrap it up after. Yeah. So this one is called Finish a Sentence. So I'm just going to give you the first half, and then you just respond okay. to how you would finish it. So this first one, my friends would say that I am. Um, <laughs> hold on. I read that weird. My bad. My friends would say that I am. My friends would say I'm absolutely fucking nuts. Like, I'm crazy. <laughs> No Wh cap. Why is that? Um, just um, personality-wise, like I said, I didn't put that shit out there. So, you know? Okay. The, when, when people run into me, they mm -hmm. know what's up. So that's what I'm here to do. Put that so shit out there. if you know, you know type. Yeah, yeah. But I now you're going to know. <laughs> now I'm going to make sure you know. So next one is, uh, this chapter of my life is called? This chapter of my life is called Boss Up. Mm. I mean, been, boss, been making boss moves, but it's nothing but boss shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Businessman, busy the businessman is this chapter. Gotcha. Yeah. So the most underrated song on my playlist is like today. Just, yeah. The most underrated song on my playlist is today. Oh, uh, oh. Blaze. Okay. B i z z dash e b l a z e. It's happening on Spotify, all platforms. The fake busy blaze on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Go go stream today. Yeah, today. yeah, yeah. Today is <laughs> probably the most underrated, and then going ten and all that. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. tap in with Suave Porter, Free Suave Porter, Curly Sav is about to be next, guaranteed. We pushing Curly. You know what I'm saying? Like Curly's guaranteed next. Like I said. Um, who else? Free Smokey. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just more to come. Tapping with Busy Blaze. I was just talking to Scarlett a little bit before. You know what I'm saying? She, yeah. she, she, she buzzed off. I think one of the homies, um, one of the, well, not one of my homies, one of the cousins' cousins. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. got, got her situation right now. But you know what I mean? I yeah. would have took her on board, honestly speaking, if I had a couple little more helpful Suave Porter situation. So just know I'm on shit first. You mm -hmm. understand? Baby Tate from Atlanta. I was on oh, her shit. first. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of situations I'm on first. So keep Nothing. close, you know what I'm saying? And we could always make some shit happen. Yeah, like, if I can't take it, I could have swung a scarlet to somebody who could have took it at the time. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Got the DMs to prove. Got to keep this man in mind. <laughs> yeah, 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 most definitely. All right. What is, uh, my favorite song I wrote is? My favorite song I wrote right now is Big Brother. Yeah, Big Brother. Big, Big Brother? Big Brother, yeah. And I got a record on r and Biz called Mercy. Mm. I really enjoy that record, too. Okay. Yeah, R&B, yeah, so that's favorites. All right, last one for this one. Let's do it. I can't do business with you if? I can't do business with you if you do not want it for yourself. If you don't want to do this shit for yourself, I'm not interested. You understand? Mm -hmm. Other than that, we could do business. Shout out to Just Augusto, the one still out here running around going crazy. Shout out to Curly Sav, like I said. You know what I'm saying? Free Suave Porter. The ones who want to do business, tap in with me. You know what I'm saying? Everybody who's still out here going crazy. Even shout out to my young boy, uh, Q Run It Up. You know what I'm saying? Show Q Run It Up some love. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah, man. Dunk Rock, congratulations. Um, everybody who want it for themselves is showing right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight up. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, that wraps up Finish the Sentence. Uh, busy, thank you so much for coming out. We really appreciate you. Damn. Um, thank you for having me. Of course. Appreciate y'all talking to town. I'll be back. I promise y'all. You know what I'm saying? We're going to spin back the block. I said a lot of shit, so... <laughs> I'll take the time with that. Um, before we sign off, uh, one last thing. Do we have anything to look out for on the come yes, up from you or your artists? Well, before we sign off, tap in the Busy Blaze, B-I-Z-Z-E, B-L-A-Z-E, -E, in the link in my bio on Instagram. My Instagram is the fake Busy Blaze, T-H-E-F-A-K-E, B-I-Z-Z-E. -E. And when you tap in, I got a link in my bio called Airbnb Boss, Airbnb Boss Class, because that's what we've been doing on the Boss Up shit. You know what I'm saying? Also in that link tree, you're going to see everything. So I've Porter's links, my, my links, you know what I'm saying, to music. But Airbnb Boss Classes, if you want to do business, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I also got my Patreon for if y'all are interested in business, because we're doing business with Busy. You know what I'm saying? Mm, okay. At the end of the day, so... Let's talk, you know what I'm saying? Tap in. Like I said, I'm still heavy in the music shit, but this is, you know, a little side hustle talks. Tap in with me. All right, awesome. Yeah. Busy, again, thank you appreciate so much. You, thank we you. really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in to Talk of the Town. I'm Enrique. We'll see you next time. Gang, gang. Yes, sir.